G'day, I'm out on Walbury Country, a New Haven Wildlife Sanctuary. We just had significant early summer rainfall and it's a great opportunity to talk a bit about weed management. Now we're pretty lucky here at New Haven, we don't have a huge list of weeds, 22 recorded on site. Of that 22, it's not practical or financially feasible to eradicate or control them all. So initially an assessment was carried out on each species to determine the threat it poses to the sanctuary. From that, we can work out the level of control, the resources needed, and the budgets to apply to each species. From that, we found that we do have a few what's known as transformer species that we really have to closely monitor and control, like cooch grass, hairy flower love grass, but the one I wanna talk about today in our most dominant weed species at New Haven, buffel grass. Buffalo grass was first introduced to Central Australia to help with dust suppression and also a pasture grass for the cattle industry. Now widespread throughout Central Australia, dramatically changing natural landscapes. Not only does it outcompete native species, but it also drastically affects quality of habitat for native wildlife. However, the most significant impact buffalo grass has to our landscape is its impact to the fire regime. Buffalo grass will burn three times hotter than native grasses which poses a real threat when implementing our fire management program and trying to manage summer wildfires. It changes fire behaviour by increasing fuel loads and connectivity, which in turn leads to catastrophic fires and the destruction of habitat, which then post-fire leaves next to no cover for native wildlife to hide from introduced feral predators. As New Haven was a cattle station for some time, Problem areas with high volumes of buffalo grass around pre-existing bores, under mature trees, disturbed soils, our Cow Creek grasslands to the south and along roadsides. Having a targeted approach to buffalo grass is incredibly important for successful treatment. We concentrate on areas with high conservation value, sensitive vegetation communities, cultural sites. Stage one, our feral free fenced area where our reintroduction program takes place our operation space and roadsides. The spread of seeds from the vehicles is a concern on New Haven with a public road running through the middle of the sanctuary. So washing down vehicles is incredibly important. Whether it's new staff, contractors, visitors or campers, the key is early intervention and keeping people informed of the potential risk their vehicle could be bringing in. It's taken 15 years of routine weed management to get to where we are today. A detailed weed strategy since 2006, implemented by very dedicated staff and our amazing team of volunteers. A lot of work goes into developing our weed strategy and annual management plans, from land managers, ecologists, and botanists on the ground, to our national science team, who all help develop our science-driven approach to targeting weeds over the 260,000 hectares of New Haven. On low density areas or around water sources, we can chip and pull the buffalo. We use 15 litre backpacks for walking on country and using herbicide on individual plants. We have a U-Butte trailer with two automatic hose reels that can carry 400 litres of herbicide to tackle larger infestations. The herbicide we use is a very low grade glyphosate mix that is safe for aquatic species and waterways, something that is very important to us when thinking about our overall goal of protecting all native animal species and their habitats. Post-treatment, the key is constant surveillance and monitoring to see the effects of the treatment, look for new potential spread and also have valuable data for future planning. Following good rain, it's extremely rewarding to return to these once weed infested areas to see native grasses thrive. And as these plant communities are restored, we see an explosion of biodiversity which then allows the wildlife to return to their natural habitat. Weed management on a property of this size is a big task, but in previous years, New Haven has eradicated two of Central Australia's most significant weed species. And we are continually looking for new, cost-effective, culturally appropriate and safe control options that we can roll out on a broad scale to help achieve our goals. Weed management isn't the most glamorous part of conservation, but it's an incredibly important component in helping restore biodiversity, decreasing that frequency and intensity of wildfires, and most importantly, 
helping protect all of our native animal species and their habitats in which they live.